For our last lecture in the gynaecological cancers, we'll be looking at cancer of the vagina. I haven't split this lecture, it's fairly short. As we have done each time, we'll have a quick revision of the anatomy. I would suggest in preparation for your tutorial next week, you review the overall anatomy of the female pelvis, particularly CT anatomy, as that is the imaging modality you'll use in a radiotherapy centre. The vagina is an elastic muscular canal that extends from the vulva up, in, up to the cervix. Vaginal cancer is different from cancer of the cervix. Primary vaginal cancers are rare. Fewer than 300 are diagnosed with this type of cancer in the UK each year. It is more common for a cancer to start in an area close by, such as the cervix or endometrium, and grow into the vagina. Primary vaginal cancers are defined as arising solely from the vagina with no involvement of the external cervical os proximally or the vulva distally. The importance of this definition lies in the different clinical approaches to the treatment of upper and lower vaginal cancer. According to the International Federation of Gynaecology and Obstetrics, VIGO, a vaginal lesion involving the external os of the cervix should be considered cervical cancer and treated as such. A tumour involving both the vulva and the vagina should be considered vulvar cancer. There is a steep increase in diagnosis at age 45 and above, but the majority of patients are aged at over 65 at diagnosis and therefore postmenopausal. Survival rates vary greatly with, with staging and age, with survival rates of about 75 for stage 1 at 5 years, dropping to near 20% at 5 years for stage 3 cancers. The most common type of vaginal cancer is a squamous cell cancer. This accounts for nearly 90% of any of them diagnosed. This starts in the squamous cells that line the vagina. It usually starts in the upper part of the vagina and is more common over the age of 60. Adenocarcinoma is a bit more rare. It starts in the glandular cells in the vagina. These normally make liquid to lubricate it and it is more common under 30. There are some more rare types of vaginal cancer and these include melanoma, a small cell carcinoma, sarcomas, lymphomas and clear cell cancers. It can be difficult to diagnose vaginal cancer. It is rare, it's only 1-2% to 2 of um, gynecological cancers. It occurs in older patients and therefore they are not eligible for regular screening. So it's often on a late stage diagnosis. Most patients, about 65 to 80%, present with painless vaginal bleeding. 30% present with abnormal discharge. 20% with urinary symptoms. 15 to 30% present with pelvic pain. There is sometimes a feeling of a mass within the vagina and that accounts for about 10% of presentation but about 10 to 25% are completely asymptomatic. MRI is generally seen as the best imaging modality for gynecological tumours due to its excellent soft tissue definition. As you can see from the two images that I've selected here, uh, they've helpfully marked out the tumour. On the first image on the left hand side, they have put in a vaginal gel to aid with the contrast of this. And you can clearly see the tumour is sitting at the superior and anterior aspect of the vagina. In the second image, there is a fungating vaginal mass that we have identified for you, which is about four centimetres by one and a half by five and a half centimetres. And it's arising from the posterior wall of the upper vagina in this case. You can see at the front of that image um, is the actual endometrium. And at the back of the images, you can make out the sacrum. When planning these patients, um, we will also use an MRI um, as a reference tool, although the patients must be planned using CT. As we discussed earlier, there is often a spread of disease in these cases, as it is harder to diagnose. Most commonly, the spread is through the lymphatic system and therefore PET-CT is also a very good imaging tool used to find any of the metastatic spread. And as before, we have discussed the FIGO staging. So the same as all other gynecological tumours, as you can see from this helpful little diagram here, 
It's also provided the TMN staging alongside it and a little diagram just to help you with that visually. But feel free to have a look at this in a little bit more detail. A lot of the risk factors are very similar for other gynaecological conditions, particularly cervical cancer. So previous pelvic radiotherapy, the HPV virus, so over 70% of vaginal cancers are linked to this. Smoking and age, so 40% of vaginal cancers are in females aged 75 plus. One of the other main conditions is vein, which is a condition which changes the cells in the vagina and makes them more likely to become cancerous. So we can have a look at the different treatments for vaginal cancer now, and we'll start with surgery. So for the pre-cancerous condition vein, we would start with laser surgery for the patient. This is fairly non-invasive and they could recover quite quickly. If the tumour itself was um, small, we could have a wide local excision, um, if the tumour is small and easy to reach. So the next choice, if it was larger, would be a vaginectomy. Or a vaginectomy was reconstruction, which is removing the whole of the vagina. The patient may um, have a radical hysterectomy, which would include them removing all or a portion of the vagina and more of the um, reproductive organs, including the cervix and possibly the endometrium. And if the patient was premenopausal, they would maybe consider also removing the um, ovaries as well. There is also the possibility of a hysterectomy while removing some of the surrounding tissues. Now, this is a massive piece of surgery and it is not commonly performed. However, in cases of wide case spread, it may be done. Looking now at the chemotherapy and immunotherapy, chemo can be given preoperatively to reduce tumour size called debulking. It can also be used alongside radiotherapy as a radio sensitizer, much like in other gynaecological cases. We can use it um, to palliate and cisplatin is often the first choice of drug for this. Immunotherapy is still relatively new in this treatment site due to its rarity. It is showing promise, however, especially for more advanced disease. As we've said before, vaginal cancer is very rare, so you may not see that many treated. However, radiotherapy does tend to be the main treatment for these patients. And with other gynecological cancers, we use VMAT and adaptive radiotherapy is often an option. There is often involvement of surrounding structures and nodes. The patient would be planned supine, contrast CT with bill and bladder prep and usually some form of prosep or um, knee and feet stocks to keep them in the right position. 40 to 60 gray is the standard dose and 20 to 30 fractions. This varies from department to department as with all other things. Brachytherapy is also a heavily utilised treatment option. It is performed under general anaesthetic or spinal block and sedation. Vaginal vaults are an example of intracavitary brachytherapy and interstitial brachytherapy is used on small tumours that are more easily accessible within the vagina. Patients are given a CT to aid with the planning of this, as with other brachytherapy treatments. We can look a little bit more in depth at brachytherapy when we come to look at this in our tutorials. So that is the end of the slides for the gynaecological cancers. We shall discuss some of these aspects in greater depth in our tutorial next week. Please find some further reading attached to this module. Um, this includes some of the NICE guidelines for some of the sites and we'll have a wee look more at that in the tutorial as well.